welcome everyone to the prague international chess festival where pragnananda takes the white pieces against vincent keimer it's going to be a big clash prague has arrived at the board he has the white pieces and there you have vincent coming in they both have played several games in fact their first clash goes all the way back to world under 10 championship now both of them have become two of the best players in the world prag with an elo of 2747 vincent with an elo of 2738 this promises to be an exciting clash the prag masters is one of the biggest events in the world of chess before the candidates and we have three indian candidates playing there prag gukesh and vidit because this proves to be an ideal place for them to get some playing practice before the big match up there you have prag adjusting all his pieces that's a common thing with all of these players and vincent comes back and now takes his chair let's go the game is about to begin it's 90 minutes for 40 moves and then 30 minutes increment with 30 seconds per move shake of hands and E4 is what Prag says to the chief guest and he makes the move E4 on the board pictures to be taken and the games have begun oh prag takes it back <laughs> he takes the pawn back uh, perhaps that's the move he wants to make or will he play something else vincent starts the clock and prag takes his time generally prag has this habit of taking his time before the first move this is also something that vidit does before his move uh, again it's something that they follow as a ritual to get into the zone to get into that peak mindset so that they can play their best possible chess and this is very interesting uh, to know what he is doing but for now let's focus on the game because it's not so easy to know what prag is thinking and he opens the game with 1 e4 and presses the clock vincent on the other hand takes absolutely no time and pushes his pawn to e5 no meditation no calmness nothing he just it's like i'm ready with my move knight to f3 i'm in the zone says vincent knight comes out to c6 and are we going to witness the italian because prag really likes this opening bishop c4 played and both of them have played so many games in this opening knight f6 comes out there is the sharp line with knight g5 but i doubt if this will happen a no it doesn't d3 the slow and steady way to play the italian bishop c5 comes out and now prag just castles the way in which white builds up this positions is to put his pawn on c3 and then later play in the center so a6 played making a square for the bishop to drop back on a7 prag goes c3 and you will notice that vincent isn't castling very quickly you know he's waiting for prag's intentions he goes back with the bishop so that later on a pawn push to d4 will not hit the bishop bishop is well placed a4 gaining space this is how the italian is played both keep making useful moves prag keeps the option of playing bishop g5 open he wants that black castles before maybe he pins it i don't know there are a lot of little subtleties here you can play h3 he goes rook e1 which is also a very useful move you can put your knight on a3 you can put your knight on d2 so a lot of things can happen here vincent now castles and actually prag has this opportunity to pin the knight but then h6 would come in so he instead goes h3 just improving his position stopping knight g4 ideas so that the f2 pawn will be under pressure and you know just gets up from the chair vincent now uh, plays knight to h5 now this is a move that vincent had played against volokitin before and prag is he prepared against this move yes he is he goes bishop g5 now you would love to push your f pawn but actually it's pinned so vincent brings his knight back and now this is such a provocative idea because prag would have done bishop g5 without this provocation but now you've lost actually a move so prag decides to take advantage of it with d4 volokitin had actually gone knight d2 but with d4 
Prague is hitting in the center, making use of this pin H6 played by Vincent. He needs to do something about the pin. He cannot keep it for too long. Of course, Prague doesn't want to take the knight on F6. He comes back to H4, keeping this pin intact. And now uh, Vincent is thinking, does he go G5? Whoa, he plays it. Bishop is attacked. Now Bishop can come back to G3. That is possible. Uh, then you maybe go rook e8 or queen e7. But I think Prague can also sacrifice his knight. Will he do it? Yes, he does it. He sacks his knight. He takes the pawn. He's going to get two pawns. Black's king is going to get completely ripped apart. But Vincent calmly is drinking water. He knows what is happening. He has 1 hour 25 minutes on the clock. Prague, by the way, has 1 hour 30 minutes. He takes on g5 and now Prague takes back bishop g5. Now, important moment in the game because the threat is to go queen f3 and then attack or maybe even just rook e3, rook g3. So, Vincent needs to be careful with what he does. But I believe that he is uh, well versed with this. He goes king h7 and that's a very useful move because he, his idea is rook g8 hitting the bishop and then putting the rook on g6 to defend the knight. So that's the plan. Queen f3 played by Prague. Excellent move. Hitting the knight and attacking it twice. So there's no time for rook g8. King g6. King comes up. Oof. King is exposed. But how do you attack? Because now white center is falling apart. Bishop h4 played. Now, idea is to give a check perhaps. But that's not uh, so dangerous because I go back and that's why Vincent takes the pawn in the center. And he's saying that, look, not only have I taken the pawn, I open up the e5 square for my knight. If you take back the pawn, my bishop comes to the life, comes to life and defends the knight. So, Vincent, looking very confident, Prague gives a check. For now, it seems like Prague is thinking a bit. He has 1 hour 14 minutes, but very much that he is still in his prep because if you are not in your prep, you would take much more time than this for your every move that you are making. King h7. How do you continue the attack is the billion dollar question here. Maybe you just want to get your knight out. Well, Prague goes bishop g5. Very smart move. His idea is check. And when the king comes here, give another check and just round up this knight on f6. So Vincent has the only move and he finds it, rook h8. Because now after check, king g7, there's no queen h6. The rook controls this square. So very important move by Vincent, the best move there. And Prague quietly and calmly plays knight d2. This opens up a huge, huge uh, area now because the threat is e5 and knight e4. So either black goes knight e5 to stop this move or this very weird move queen g8. Oh, Vincent finds it. Queen g8, what a move. Because if you take here, take here, take here, check opens up the bishop and this knight is hanging. What an interesting defense with queen g8. He's actually broken the pin here. You know, the knight is no longer pinned. So next move, he can actually move his knight. And if he gets queen g6, king g8, then Vincent would be much, much better. Prague attacks. You know, he realizes there's no time. And if you now take this pawn, then after rook takes e5, boom, boom, check. This is game over. And a beautiful variation is take, take, and rook e1, f5. Take this with the rook and it's a mating attack here. Anyway, Vincent goes for the best move. He finds knight h5. He is well prepared here. He attacks the queen on g3. Queen h4. Prague goes and pins this knight. Remember this. Prague is a piece down in the position. So, he needs to recover that. Queen g6 played defending the knight. Also the best move. You really don't want to be going for g4 stuff because black simply moves his king away. So good move there. Hitting the rook and saying to the king, you can't escape just yet. But isn't Vincent simply going to play his rook to g8 and threaten mate in one? By the way, look at the time on the clock. While Prague still has an hour, Vincent is down to 28 minutes. So he is little. You know, he might be well prepared, but he's trying to recall his lines and this is never easy. Queen g2, mate is threatened. You go bishop d5 once again, Prague in his prep still. One hour, one minute still on the clock. Wow. He defends the pawn and he's threatening bishop f3 to attack the knight. 
Bishop f5 played. Fantastic move. Vincent still making the best moves in the position. And now Prague goes bishop f3. Very important now to take here. Take here and then bring the rook. Because then you have this bishop opened up on this diagonal. But instead Vincent goes directly rook a8. A mistake. And this is a huge, huge error. Because now Prague has this move g3. Which is fantastic. And the point is I can take with the bishop. There's no mate. Right now I want to take with the bishop. But there's mate. And Prague finds it. G3. He's taken quite a lot of time. In fact, he took close to 30 minutes. And he found the move G3. The point now is if you take here to open this up and attack the pawn. I have knight e4 which is a fantastic move. So Vincent goes king h6 which is I think the final mistake of the game. Prague finds g4 now. What an excellent move. The threat is not to take this or this but the threat is g5 and then picking up the knight with the bishop. Pawn takes pawn. He attacks the center but now g5 is incoming. Isn't it? Oh, but no, g5, then there is queen takes g5 perhaps, and then in the end the knight would hang. So Prague says, I'm not even in a hurry, I'm just taking back the pawn. Now my threat is g5 and bishop h5. Insane chess here. Vincent Kaimar down to 10 minutes on the. In fact, he's gone down to 2 minutes. He's thinking a lot. He takes the knight, he takes his knight and picks up the pawn. Knight takes e5, but isn't this g5 coming in and it's game over? g5 check. Prague thinking, yes, g5, and if you go with your king back, bishop takes h5, it's just a killer blow. And so, now, he has to play queen takes g5, which is mm, not the best, not the most ideal. Yes, he takes, he gives up his queen. But, but Vincent has some material, you know, he's not completely lost. He has two pieces and a pawn for the queen, that's seven points against 9. Now an important move for Prague is King h1, not King h2. Oh, but he goes King h2. This allows Vincent the idea of Bishop g6 and then later on in many lines, Knight g4 or Knight f3 comes with a check. That's why King had to go on g1, uh, h1. But he blunders. He goes Knight g6. This is a mistake because now, yes, you attack the Queen, but the Rook is hanging and Prague simply takes the Rook King takes and he's going to take another rook here on e8 and this is game over. Yes, Pragnananda has won two rooks for the queen and if you notice he's two exchanges up. But most importantly his rook is going to chop off these pawns later and the a pawn is a complete winner. Vincent tries to create some play. He goes knight f4. He is angling at the h3 pawn. He's also attacking the f2 pawn. But truth be told, Prague doesn't care about those pawns because his focus is now on his A pawn. That is the, how do you call it, the million dollar baby there. Bishop takes B7 and now you want to pick up this pawn but maybe the best idea is to push. Yes, that's what Vincent does. He keeps for the time being this structure but can Prague now start already bringing his knight in? He goes rook A8 which is a cool move. It also forces the bishop to go to b6 because if you take on a f2, I simply take on a5 and my a pawn is a runner. So he goes bishop b6 and now it's time to bring your knight into the game. Somehow black has a lot of representation on the king side but on the queen side his bishop is all alone trying to keep everything together. That's not going to be enough. Prague is just easing into the game. You can see the confidence on his face. Bishop takes f2, chopped off by Vincent. The pawn is not so critical because there's no way that black is creating any play there. Rook comes in and takes the pawn. There are now several threats, one of them being bishop e4 to pin here, you know, the bishop. So have to play this carefully. He goes d5. Very interesting move because if you take bishop d5, maybe king h4 is his idea and trying for bishop g3 and some kind of an attack. But Prague gives no such opportunity. He goes rook f1. So that if you take the knight, I take your bishop attacking here. And this is quite dangerous. So Vincent drops his bishop back to b6. Uh, the bishop was running out of squares there. And now Prague is simply going to take the bishop. He's thinking hard. And yes, he does. Takes, pawn takes. And now... 
rook b5 rook b6 start pushing your a pawn down the board that's the idea yes he plays his rook to b5 great move by prague there and vincent he goes bishop h3 well he just takes that pawn uh, attacking the rook but the rook now can move away like rook g1 check looks like a great move oh prag just sacrifices his exchange back he says that i don't need to keep so much material for myself i can just give up one of my rooks to remove one of his attackers and now take the b pawn and there you have it guys the a pawn is running down the board there's no way that vincent's going to be able to stop it and he resigns there pragnananda wins what a big victory for him with this win prag gains 5 elo points pumping up his elo to 2752 becoming the india number 1 on the live ratings getting ahead of vishyanand and also the crossing 2750 for the first time in his career vincent there discussing with prag smiling they both are friends of each other and prag of course trying to sort of think what was happening were you guys prepared <laughs> you know there were the i think this conversation is very very interesting between them and uh, there you have vincent saying i was trying to recollect everything prag also well they actually played 24 moves of preparation and after that one mistake by vincent and the game was over what a game this was what a brilliant prep by both players but prag more so and for now he leads with one out of one in prag